Randall, the first thing we should bring up here is this near miss we had. So I've got the MIT Technology Review website pulled up here. It says the asteroid managed to get, uh, let's see, a huge asteroid flew very close to Earth last week. How did we miss it? Asteroid managed to get within just 73,000 kilometers or 45,360 miles of our planet without anyone noticing. The miss lends a new sense of urgency to preparations for a potential collision one day. So was this, have you looked at this? Was this an asteroid or a piece of a comet? Was it really an asteroid? I think it was an asteroid. Okay. You want to share that? We've got a, we've got a, we're going to do a screen share real quick. And they've got a little graphic of the orbital orbit thing here. We'll pull yeah, it up. Let's check it out. Well, and even some of them are calling it a city killer, which is really not going to be very big. You know, the, the Tunguska object was 150 feet maybe, and that leveled 800 square miles. So, uh, yeah. you know, that would wipe out a large city, no problem. So it really doesn't have to be that big of an object to be right. a city killer. And just maximize that. Can you guys see this? Is it filling up the whole screen there? I got it. You see mm -hmm. the orbit? Orbit's moving? Yep. That's that close, like though. It. Yeah. That's, uh, it's not playing the whole video for us, though. You can see the asteroid down there, 2019 OK, in its orbit. Oh, yeah, it keeps resetting. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was doing, though, when, yeah. when I was watching you right. play it. It's a short video. Anyway, if, uh, but it's easy to find. You guys can go find this video. It's been all over the place, and you basically can watch that asteroid sort of sneak up on Earth from behind. Uh, so, so what was the answer to the question, how did we miss it? Did they, has anybody come up with an answer for that yet? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, because it's small. Yeah, that's true. You, <laughs> you know, and you think, you think, excuse me, Randall, you think the Earth diameter is, you know, roughly 8,000 miles. You're looking at 45,000 miles. So that is, that is, you know. Yeah. So that five, MIT, five plus Earth diameters, that is really a, a close bug. Yeah. So MIT Technology Review says, uh, it's hard not to feel concerned that a city killer size asteroid wasn't detected further ahead of time. It was announced just hours before it passed by Earth after being detected a few days beforehand by teams in the U.S. and Brazil. Its relatively small size, unusual orbit, and fast speed all conspired to make it tough to spot, researchers said. Mm-hmm. Well, like Brad is pointing out, they're calling it a city killer, but, you know, its range of size, the, the higher end of the range was 427 feet in diameter. Yeah. So let's say that it's um, uh, 400 feet. If it if it was at the higher end of the of the spectrum, if the if the diameter is four hundred feet, the radius is two hundred feet. The radius of the Tunguska object was say roughly in the neighborhood of seventy five feet. But the thing is that volume, assuming that it's a roughly circular object, scales by the uh, third power of the yeah. radius. So you would have four thirds pi r cubed time you know r being 75 cubed for tunguska and then you would have if it's up to four 200 feet radius uh for the um for this object then uh you're looking at a volume of roughly 19 equivalent to 19 tunguskas if it if it was at the higher end of the of that right that would have been more than a city killer because that's more than a city killer. yeah yeah if if it's at the higher range, which it could have been, yeah, um, you know. So if you're talking about a 15 megaton bomb uh, for Tunguska, then this is up in the neighborhood of 285 megatons. So yeah. 285 megatons is 285 million um, tons of TNT, and give it to us in black hat. Equivalent to. Uh, Let's say that would be equivalent to about 28,000 Hiroshima bombs. Woo. Oh, my gosh. So that's, that's more than a city. That's a state killer. Yeah. That, that would basically take out maybe not a state the size of Texas, but one the size of Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Well, that would mean a number, it could take out a number of small nations around the world. Yes, yeah. it could take out. Yes, definitely. And and if an object like that struck the Earth, we would literally be picking up the pieces for a decade or more. And if it hit the Pacific, it would wipe out multiple nations the size of Texas. Well, if it hit the Pacific, that's where I was going. Yeah, he, he, the thing is here is the object at that scale, at that size. Let's say it's four hundred feet in diameter. Is it going to penetrate the atmosphere and strike the ground, or is right. it going to blow up in the atmosphere like? Tunguska did. 
that's going to all depend uh, well mostly depend on the density of the object yeah, right if it's a lower density object it could fragment and then really what you've got is like a shotgun blast and it would be really more devastating over a larger area because for one thing if it hit the ground down the ground absorbs the ener a lot of that energy which of course would get translated into seismic energy and certainly cause earthquakes within the vicinity yeah, and probably some pretty nasty earthquakes out to a radius of a couple of hundred miles. But um, nonetheless, the radius of destruction would be less at a ground impact than than an atmospheric. That's why, you know, when when they bombed Hiroshima, it did it, the bomb didn't fall and hit the ground and blow up. It was time to blow up in the atmosphere so that the radius of destruction would be much greater. Right. So the uh, so the point I think being is that. An object this size, if it was 400 feet in diameter, that would be a major catastrophe. It would not cause any mass extinctions. It would not cause the end of human civilization. But what it would do would be to basically give us a real solid kick in the ass that would take maybe even decades to recover from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I've Considering, like, we're not fully recovered from Katrina yet, really. I mean, yeah. you know, the infrastructure of New Orleans hasn't been brought back to what it was right at least the last time i checked in a few years ago yeah but don't you think the impact it would have would depend on where it hit if it hit new york or if, if it hit silicon valley that could be a, a civilization disruptor well you're right you know if it hit yeah, moscow there'd be the emp function too yeah i mean it could take down the the the, the communications grid maybe around the whole planet yeah I mean, it, it would definitely be a civilization disruptor. Yeah, a major disruptor. Yes, it would. It would. And and if you had, you know, if it's like came in over a populated area, you would have millions upon millions of casualties. Yeah. You would. I mean, if it came over the eastern seaboard, yeah, that's. So 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 the term city killer, in, in frightening in, in and of itself, is really, really doesn't do something like this justice. Mm-hmm. Right. In one of the articles I was reading about this, they were saying that, well, we really don't track things this small. They, they're, the ones they're concerned about traditionally have been the kilometer size or greater. Yeah. Those are the ones they're tracking. They don't track things in this range. Right. And that's one reason it was missed. And, and, and here's the thing. In terms of likelihood of encounters, it's the, frequency, the potential frequency would be much higher for an object this size than a kilometer object. Yeah. But, and, and here's the other thing too. Sometimes these objects may come in in swarms or they may come in in pairs. They may come in in swarms. Um, you know, you might have a collection of objects. I mean, at some point we could talk about the, um, the great meteor procession of 1913, which was probably a half a dozen to a dozen Tunguska sized objects that skimmed the Earth's atmosphere and went back out into space. Oh yeah, I remember mm -hmm. reading about that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, eyewitnesses accounts of these lines going across the sky. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and so if that thing had come in at a slightly steeper trajectory, boom, yeah. it would it would have wiped because it passed right over Mo uh, Montreal and New York, yeah. Boston, right. all of that right. area there would have been decimated in 1913. Yeah. And one of the big questions is, is this new? Or have they always been passing by this close regularly forever? Or is something changing within the cosmic environment that there's more of these? And we're fortunate that we're actually looking out there and, and being able to see some of them and forecast. You know, even though this one was small enough, we didn't see it very far ahead of time. You know, is, is, are things increasing where, where it's important that we are watching? Yeah, that raises a question too. They, the the graphic you showed showed an orbit for it, which means it's got some periodicity to it. Yes. So it how many times? Twice. It just at this particular time, Earth was there when yeah. it crossed the orbit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, it will be back again. Right. And 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 how close will it be next time? How close was was it in the past? You know, we don't know because, like as Brad said, we're looking for these things now. And we still miss this one. Yeah. Well, and a, and a big one came through, you know, right at two months ago. It was back in May. There was one that was over a mile wide, and, and it had its own satellite. 
It was a yeah. third of a mile wide, you know, <laughs> and, and it's on a, it's on a, you know, six month plus orbit around the sun, you know, 180 some days. I mean, that's, that's fascinating nice. to me that that's out there too. Well, we did find that one and we, we are able to track that and, and uh, like the graphic showed, we can determine its orbit and when it will be back. And they don't, they don't say it's, it's on any earth colliding trajectory anytime soon. You know, they haven't pat that out, but, you know, a mile object with a third of a mile satellite just yeah. came by two months ago. You know, this, this I, is, this I, is I regular news. I didn't hear about that one. Wow. That would be a major planetary disruption there. Major. Yeah. People would really be wondering, worrying about their safe spaces then. Yeah. <laughs> you guys I passed by three. It was about three, three. I, I read it earlier again, uh, three plus million miles away so right. not really not really a danger not that close but still those those kind of objects are out there probably times yes a hundred times a thousand and those are just you know, the asteroids the, the the nasa they don't watch comets yet they're not really they're not really looking for cometary stuff yet in their sort of uh, near earth object database. They're looking for asteroids only. And, and so the fact that they also, th that, that they're not looking at the comet stuff and they missed this asteroid. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you, know, the, the, and you didn't see this one. The danger of comets is not so much a comet coming in and the nucleus of the comet striking the earth. Although right. that could happen. The danger of comets is comets coming in that then get trapped into a uh, a Jovian orbit, which sends yeah. them ping-ponging back and forth between Jupiter and the sun, and then they begin to disintegrate. Right. And so they begin to litter their orbits with debris, and if the Earth's orbit, or rather the, uh, it creates a meteor stream, within that meteor stream there may be large, there may be multiple Tunguska-sized objects and up, um, and then the Earth will cross this, can cross this stream if it precesses in so that the two uh, streams intersect. So that to me is really more the danger of comets. And, you know, the thing is, it seems like the more that we learn, the more it seems like there's no clear cut dividing line um, between comets. It almost seems like comets and, and iron asteroids are two endpoints of a continuum. Right, it's fully populated between there, and there are things that almost look like hybrids that look like asteroids, but probably came originally from a disintegrating common nucleus. Right. Yeah, like the like the asteroids are all of the volatile say, gases, the volatiles, and the crystals have evaporated or sublimated off of them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, a devolatized devolatilized comet nucleus might be indistinguishable from an asteroid. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right.